Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to part 7 of the Jewelers Lathe videos. Uh, part 7, as we've learned from Rocky, is always the best, so uh, hope you enjoy this. Differences from the last video, you'll notice I've got a, a sort of stainless steel end piece on the carriage here, and that actually contains some bushings for the, uh, the mechanism to ride in now, so that's a lot more polished. I'm not going to get into it just because it's sort of a pain to take it apart, but um, suffice it to say that's working a lot better now at least. Next big announcement is that I know for this project I've been doing everything manual machining, which, you know, has been tons of fun, but I've been so busy recently, I've been running low on time, especially, you'll notice this video is sort of three weeks after my last video as opposed to two. I kind of aim for two, I guess. Um, so what I've decided to do is to start CNC machining stuff when it's uh, sort of an obvious CNC part. That's to say, it doesn't mean it can't be manually machined. I think um, I've shown that most of the style of parts I'm making here can be manually machined, so hopefully that's not a deterrent for people who want to do this project with manual machining. I've seen a lot more people sign up on my Patreon, actually, for the plans, which is sick. I'd love to see someone make it, so... Anyways, uh, let's hop into it. The first part is this uh, dovetail. So this is actually made out of, I think it's 410 stainless. Um, this was like a super oddball piece of scrap material that we happen to have. And it just happened to be the perfect dimensions to cut this out of. Now, when I was designing this, I was like, where am I gonna find the right size, you know, piece of either hardened steel or stainless steel? And I was like, oh, you know what I should use as a parallel? So I actually had an original design that used a sort of a, like a cheap Char's parallel kind of thing that was chopped up basically and then you know use carbide end mills on on hardened steel it should be fine carbide beats steel simple as that um but then it, i found i was sort of a, making too many accommodations for this silly little idea but that being said you know i mean one of the huge advantages of making small stuff like this is you can adapt um you know larger things to to work for your application so rather than have to worry about a huge slab of steel I could sort of say oh let's make it out of a parallel and see if that works didn't end up doing it but you know I thought I'd share that just because that's you know sort of where my mind was at I guess so so this is where the uh, cross slide's gonna fit you'll notice um, I've got this mounted with fasteners and the fastener holes are oversized that is to conform with my usual standard of if you can't make it accurate make it adjustable I sort of joke about if you can't make it accurate, make it adjustable, but it's totally true. You could have done something like this on a drill press with enough clearance, and you could have dialed it in to be totally accurate. For now, I'm not going to dial this in, um, and I did sort of make some effort to make this an accurate part, but uh, yeah, for now, I'm just going to screw it together. I've really got to get better Allen keys. All right, so now we have the dovetail on. Um, this is the body of the cross slide, so I guess the cross slide itself. This is made out of A2 tool steel. Uh, this, it's not hardened, it's just uh, in the soft state. A2 is fairly corrosion resistant, it's also very stable over time. So it's a good material choice for things like this. Um, you can, of course, harden it, uh, and it's air hardening, which is a huge advantage. So you basically just heat it up and, you know, let it sort of set in the air. Uh, it's also, it's reasonably nice to machine, so, yeah, I also had a piece of it, so that's, uh, perfect material. This part's another part that I CNC machined. Obviously, it's very doable on a manual machine, um, I just use CNC again to save a bit of time, because I'm running behind a bit. I did end up using the manual mill to do this countersink, though, because, you know, it's a pretty big countersink, and, uh, I didn't know if the Tormac was up to it, so I used the bridge port. This is, um, this is just a 304 stainless steel pivot that I made. Uh, this is all manual lathe work. Uh, you'll notice on the back here I actually dished this out a bit. So if you want something to sit flat, especially if it's turned on a lathe, if you dish the middle out, it's got a lot better chance of sitting flat on the edge. Um, when the tool deflects when you're facing, it deflects away from the work, so it wants to cut a dome. So if you purposely dish it out like this, um, yeah, it gives you a lot better chance of it sitting nice and solid. So, this just goes on here like this. Alright, so that's basically just a compound slide pivot. Um, 
I'm going to put a locking screw in here. I don't have one yet, but yeah, that'll come up. So this unit just slides on here like this. You see it's pretty free sliding. I'm going to have adjusted with a thumb screw here. Um, just a nice, you know, simple adjustment method. You may actually have a lever off of it. This is an M4 size, so it's kind of hard to find one that I like. So I'll probably end up making it, but, you know, we'll see. Um, so I guess next we'll put the link on. I didn't actually get around to making this link out of metal. Uh, interestingly enough, you'll note that all of my links are, you know, roughly 3 16 of an inch thick by half inch wide. So I probably should have just bought some 3 16 inch thick by half wide stock. But I didn't. So I've been doing this with scrap material, you know, never have the right size stock. So I just laser cut this quickly. Um, this will be aluminum though and anodized and all that. So the method I've decided to use here for fastening these is just with little uh, stubby pins like this. And I'm going to put the pin through. And then there's actually, there's actually a, uh, a grub screw here. So what I can do is just pop this in like this. And then we'll tighten up the grub screw. So that's not a very elegant solution, but it certainly works. Um, so that's why I decided to use it here. I got a lot of really good feedback about pins from uh, the tailstock part. So I wanted to use those, but again, I'm really pressed for time. So I decided to go with this. It seems to be pretty effective and pretty happy with it so far. Next part is the cross slide lever. This is just uh, aluminum. Um, I CNC machined this. This is a really good candidate for CNC machining, but if you look back at the uh, the tailstock video, you'll see how I made an almost identical part with manual machining, and then screwed it up and CNC machined it. But still, this is basically going to attach to this link down here, and that'll pivot this in and out. Why don't I just do it? Um, okay, I think the best way to go about this, I've got the spacer here. So put the spacer on there. Now I've just got I've got a socket head cap screw with a plastic washer for now. It's going to be something nicer, like maybe a button head cap screw. I don't know, something nicer looking. But this just screws in this hole here. Calculate the depth of the hole so it bottoms out at the right time. So it's got the right amount of tension. Now I'm just going to take one of these little pin things and just jam it through here. Alrighty. So that's how the cross slide's going to work. Um, you'll see when it's not engaged or when it's retracted all the way, it sort of sits in this corner here, which I really like. So when you move the whole thing, it doesn't interfere with the body, which is good. Um, locking mechanism, like I said, is just going to be a thumb screw here for now. Uh, again, I'm pretty pressed for space, so I'm not going to try to be a hero and do all kinds of uh, clockworky kind of stuff in here to make this lock. I mean, just a simple grub screw, I think will work for this. Um, so yeah, that, that works pretty well. Uh, next up is going to be kind of a compound slide system for up here. And this is where it's starting to really diverge from a normal lathe. I mean, this obviously is lever actuated, so it's not a normal lathe, but you'll see when I get the next, I think two axes done, you'll see how it's, you know, just something I came up with, I guess it's not really a normal lathe. I also think I came up with a way of securing these uh, arms. So these are press fit. Um, I'm not going to press these in yet because this isn't anodized yet and that would just be a mess. But basically the plan for these, I'm going to press them in and then I'm going to put sort of a collar on them like this. And this is actually going to be a little bit too wide of a hole spacing. So when I press it all the way on, this is a bad example because it's laser cut and it fits just fine. When I press it on though, it's going to want to pull these apart. And then when I put the end cap on the handle, oops. and then when I put the end cap on the handle, it's actually going to pinch them back together. So you're going to get sort of a, a levering effect that holds them in position. I've done a couple tests on the back parts here and it seems to work fairly well. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh yeah, I've started on a, Started on a knob for this locking system on the uh, on the z-axis here. I just got to cut some some grooves out of here, I guess, and it'll be a little more comfortable to use. I also turned up a quick pin here. I'm gonna cross drill that and throw some kind of a clevis in it. So yeah, anyways, I guess it's coming along pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it so far. So I'd anticipate this is probably gonna take about three more videos to finish. I'm gonna do 
the remaining axes on top, then I'm going to have a work holding section, and then I'm obviously going to have to do a demo piece. So that'll be the three parts of the video. Um, really love working on this, but I am looking forward to getting it done because I've got a lot, a lot of other projects I want to start. So, you know, I'm moving briskly along using CNC again. Um, I'm also a little bit behind on the plans for this, but, you know, it's certainly something I am working on part-time. So if you're a patron, then, you know, don't worry, it's all coming. It's, you know, it's in the works. Uh, let's see you lift your lathe out of the booth.